Where are we going? To the Dr. Horrible Single on in LA. It's uh, so thick, the, every line, every song, that it's almost impossible to figure out where to start because there's so much that's in these, these uh, what we just saw. But uh, I guess we'll just start basically uh, where this began, uh, Felicia, where uh, the guild, what it uh, started out of and where, the, where it came from. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, um, I, I play games all my life. I'm an online game guy. So probably now. Uh, all these guys are playing Trials HD against me. Not being my score right yet, but still, I, I do play a lot of games. Um, and uh, I quit that because I had an intervention. <laughs> it's a really long story about a ladies club. It's, it's just too much. Uh, so basically I quit and I was like, I need to do something with my time. I'm bored. And I wrote a pilot called The Guild. And uh, and then my producer, Kim Eby, said that we should do this web series. So that's how everything started. And a couple hundred dollars in bagels and shooting my house. <laughs> Sturgis esque, like fast paced dialogue. Is that all written on the paper? How much comes out of it? It is unbelievable. Oh. Sturgis, what? <laughs> like, first, so it's like but the, the speed of this uh, unbelievable screwball comedy dialogue. Is it all on paper? Because jokes are so connected, I can't imagine them coming out of improv at all. Uh, no, no, it's all uh, scripted. Actually, we were just talking about this the other day. We were finishing season three, and I was like, I, people were like, oh, these are 11 page episodes. Like, that, they'll cut down. And they all cut down to like seven and a half minutes. So, uh, it's much faster because I get bored very easily. And, the, and my theory is that it, the faster we go, if something doesn't hit, then people won't notice. <laughs> <laughs> And so where did Dr. Horrible, uh, where did that stem from as well? Um, well, from a lot of places, but uh, partially from the Guild, because uh, I was a fan and, and asked Felicia's advice when I was thinking about making a web thing. Partially from the writer's strike and the inability of the uh, larger corporations to move quickly enough to do something this fun. And partially from the fact that we're wicked nerds. <laughs> see during the strike writing something and having something written, but the fact of writing something and then having all this music and doing all this, it's completely an insane undertaking. It's, uh, uh, how long did it take to, to do all that, to what we just saw? Um, it was about five months from starting to work on it to streaming it. Six days to shoot it. Um, recording it was a couple of weeks, and then most of it, most of it fell on Jed because of doing the score, the orchestrations, and, and half the song. We all took it up because of it's a musical. We could film it and then I could work on music while we were cutting it and everything. So when we shot, we were using sort of a bare bones version of everything, and then I fleshed it out afterwards. I tried to make it cool. <laughs> I was kind of curious, has Sondheim seen this or mentioned anything? Because it is so... Uh... Yes, he's seen it. What? He said it was very nice. I had no follow-up questions. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, oh, one more question about this. With uh, I saw that uh, James Gunn's The Toy Collector was uh, a shot of that. And then I know you're uh, good friends with Ben Edlund, who did uh, uh, The Tick. And then uh, James Gunn did The Special. So I was wondering, when you were going into this, was there a thought that, like, we're in entering the superhero, supervillain territory. Do we have to steer clear of any of those kind of thoughts at the same time, or no? No, well, you know, I didn't even think about um, the specials, which is really one of my favorite movies and a huge influence. But I wasn't thinking about. I just love the Toy Collector and thought she should be reading it. And it's being uh, reprinted. Uh, it's coming out again from Amazon, and I wrote the introduction, so you should get it. Um, but uh, uh, and Ben was going to write 
horrible with us, but I uh, had to bow out because of other considerations. So um, uh, they're, you know, they're the people I would go to. But I honestly, the James Gunn thing was just a coincidence. I didn't realize I was totally ripping him off. <laughs> this <is> on. <laughs> It's very easy. Uh, we did it a lot as children. Um, it was the first time we worked together since I think I was like eight years old. Um, but it went just as smoothly as it did then. Uh, we used to make, Joss used to direct us when we were children in movies. He would write movies and then we would act them out. The first one was when I was eight and the last one was when you were eight, correct? The first one was called Stupid Man. <laughs> I was stupid, man. <laughs> yeah, and Joss was Dr. Fear and Loathing. And I was his assistant. I'm gonna ask one more question, then I'm gonna open it up to the audience. But uh, as it is a webisode, and this is the American Cinema blows up the internet, is this the, do you view this as the future of uh, television in a way, as the uh, uh, prime time starts shrinking? And you have more creative control here. Uh, do you? Would you like to do more like this and go in that way? <laughs> of course, hand this one to me. Um, well, I, I, I think our project was acknowledged. We won an Emmy. after every television show, they say, go to NBC.com to watch the episode you just watched on TV on the internet. So clearly everybody is, is hip to it. And that's the end of my story. <laughs> do, you, do you think you can get away with, um, when most people try to do uh, the Marx Brothers in, in a film, if it uh, doesn't work because it's so much fast-paced stuff that uh, without the boring songs that give everyone a chance to have a break, it doesn't always quite work. But with uh, the Guild, it's so fast-paced, and them being shorter, do you feel that you can jam-pack it full of uh, fast-paced, great dialogue and not feel that, that you're, in, what am I saying, but it's not, uh, hey, does it work better as five minutes instead of an hour and a half? How about something like that? Um, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I would think that... I'm sorry, I want to feel that because I'm an audience member who just watched it all together for the first time, having seen it as five-minute installments, and I thought it worked beautifully as a whole. It was a very exciting, it was an interesting, um, the one thing I did notice that in watching Dr. Horrible versus the kid, like we, uh, you know, it, it seemed like Dr. Horrible worked better in that people could, I guess instinctively you just write kind of a space for people to laugh, which I don't do, I guess, because I was like, oh no, nobody heard that line, so I guess it is a different, a, a different pace. Maybe we play it with subtitles, maybe Spanish next time. <laughs> Alright, we're going to open up to all of you, so who has a question? Tonight is a very special night because, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we we, we, we have high hopes. Let's see, Dr. Hope. I want to. I like it. Then what is he going to do? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and three and a half jokes. <laughs> <laughs> and a title. <laughs> Right there. Hi. Um, I was wondering, uh, you were saying how you guys did a lot of improv. Did you meet at a certain improv company or? Did, did yeah. they meet at an improv company was the question. Um, we did imp improv at the Empty Stage Company. Uh, Empty Stage, which has subsequently closed down. But we do do. We closed it down. We closed it down. <laughs> the desk staff. We do actually do improv once a month. Um, uh, yeah, we sort of reformed a group of a bunch of empty stagers um, that includes uh, Felicia Jeff. and Jeff uh, Lewis from the, the Guild. Do you follow and, uh, our Twitter and we do it once a month? Yeah, yeah. We'll show up. So come see it. <laughs> Woo! You ready for it? Um, sorry, it's going to be less about the actual production, but for anyone who worked with Jonathan Riley, where can I get one of those chairs? <laughs> Monster House. Yes, they have chairs. I searched Google. I can't find anything. I don't think you must build this chair. You must shrink. 